Okay, so uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, conference. Um, and I will be go I'm going to talk about efficient combinatorial schemes for decoupling and simulating Hamiltonians. And so my talk, you know, this is going to be a first, you know, a little bit like a tutorial. And then I'm going to talk about some of the things I have been uh, working on with uh, Lorenza Viola and Martin uh, Rotelo. Okay, so what is the what what is the setup? So here we have a um, closed quantum system with Hamiltonian age, and we assume that it's d-dimensional, so we don't uh, resolve the structure of it. So it could be anything, maybe n-coupled qubits, or I don't know some qubits. And what we want, so we want to effectively change the natural time evolution, the natural Hamiltonian age, to some desired Hamiltonian. Uh, H tilde. And so how can we do that? So a simulation scheme adds a time-dependent control Hamiltonian, uh, and this Hamiltonian is usually, uh, you know, somehow restricted, and so this control Hamiltonian is to be chosen in such a way that the resulting dynamics is described by the effective Hamiltonian HF that should be equal to our desired Hamiltonian. Okay, and what are common simulation tasks? So, for, so annihilation or maximal decoupling or time suspension. So this means that uh, we want to switch off the, or we basically want to freeze the um, time evolution. So for example, you know, we want that the information is stored and that it is not changed by some time uh, evolution. And here, you know, another uh, simulation task is uh, time inversion. So we basically want that uh, the system evolves uh, back to its original state. And then, so the most general is, you know, we just want to achieve some general Hamiltonian that, for example, you know, uh, allows us to, to do some interesting computation. Um, okay, and let's start with, uh, let's start with simulation with bang-bang controls. So if, uh, if we can, uh, if we have bang-bang uh, uh, control operation, so what this means is that we can, that the natural time evolution can be interspersed with unitary bang-bang control operations, VJ, that are drawn from some finite uh, restricted set. And so here we let the system evolve for time tau1, then we apply this bang-bang operation V1 and so on. And we're going to assume that uh, the control scheme is cyclic, so this means that all these uh, bang-bang operations, if we multiply them, that we obtain the identity operator. And so the corresponding control propagators are, are so u1 is equal to the identity, and then uj is you know this product here, and then this uh, dynamics here can be rewritten in this convenient form. So let me uh, so, in, so a pictorial representation would be that so here we let the time evolution evolve for time tau one, and here we apply this bang bang operation v one, then here tau two, and so on, and so these are the here. So we're going to have always the bang bang operations, and here are the corresponding propagators that that give rise to these uh, uh, toggling frame uh, Hamiltonians. <clears throat> okay, and so let's define <clears throat> uh, the cycle length, and then <clears throat> we define these time points, and so the stroboscopic dynamics uh, is defined like this, so it can be expressed as, um, here, you know, as, as a time evolution under a uh, time-independent effective uh, Hamiltonian. <clears throat> okay, and I mean, I'm sure you know that most of you are very familiar with this here. So uh, this effective Hamiltonian so uh, can be obtained by, by the Magnus expansion. So these are these uh, terms here, the first, uh, the first two terms. And so it is known that 
so this ratio here is, so the term of order m divided by the term of order zero has uh, this, this, uh, this order. And so this means that if we trunc, trunc so truncation li, li, uh, yields more and more accurate approximation as the first controlled limit is approached. So this means that the uh, cycle time goes to zero. Okay, and so we're going to be uh, considering uh, first order Hamiltonian, uh, first, uh, first order simulation. So uh, we're, we're going to be looking at the zero term of the Magnus expansion. But, you know, by a simple trick, you know, by symmetrizing the control cycle, um, we can achieve, uh, you know, you can achieve that the terms of m order, whenever m is odd, can be made uh, equal to zero. So this means that the simulation error is only of order uh, tc uh, squared. Okay, so let's move to, so summary of bang-bang simulation. So let's see be the set of available bang bang controls and assume <coughs> excuse me that the desired Hamiltonian H tilde can be expressed in this form. So here we conjugate the natural um, Hamiltonian H and here we have these uh, factors tau tau j. And let's assume that this here is uh, an element of the of this control set. Then we can simulate this. Um, then we can simulate this uh, time evolution here for time uh, time one under this uh, effect uh, under this desired Hamiltonian H tilde with n control operation cycle time this here and arrow T C uh, squared. Okay, and you know, let me just say that you know a lot of people uh, have you know worked on this in quantum information theory. So, so some of the people here are in the audience. So, um, you know, Debbie Leung, Lorenza, uh, Martin Rotteller, and um, Michael Bremner. So, you know, many, many people. And for example, you know, in my PhD thesis, I was interested. So, you know, given a Hamiltonian H and here H uh, tilde, you know, can we find, you know, lower bounds on, uh, you know, the cycle time and also on the number of control operations. Okay, but uh, you know, let's let's now let's talk about simulation with bounded strength uh, controls. <clears throat> so simulation with bang bang controls. I think everything, or you know, a lot of things were were known. But you know, here you know the assumption of bang bang controls is you know highly unrealistic in certain situations. So so more realistically, you know, let's assume that the control Hamiltonians that the control Hamiltonian satisfies the property that its strength is bounded uh, and that this here is uh, some smooth function. So this means that the control Hamiltonian cannot be changed arbitrarily. And you know, can we still simulate uh, Hamiltonians? And what can we say about the time, number of control operations and the error of the simulation if we can only use Hamiltonians that satisfy these uh, restrictions. <clears throat> okay, so if we, um, if we, so when we consider uh, bounded strength control Hamiltonians, so it's um, useful to work with this uh, control uh, propagator. So U C of T. Um, so this is the time evolution after time t that would arise if only the control Hamiltonian were present. Okay, and then we're gonna assume that the control scheme is still cyclic for some time here tc and all uh, t. Okay, and so this is very similar to the uh, bang bang setting. So the stroboscopic dynamics at the time points tm where tm is m times the cycle length can be described here by this uh, effective Hamiltonian, which is, you know, again, time independent. You know, here we have again the Magnus expansion, but now the expression for the uh, zeroth term of the Magnus expansion is, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more complicated. Okay, and again, you know, we're going to be looking at, at, at this here. And uh, again, you know, by symmetrizing, we, could, we can achieve that the term h bar one is equal to zero simply by uh, symmetrizing. Okay, 
but um, okay. But now let, let's move to some uh, group uh, theoretic uh, tools. So, so let G be a finite group, and U uh, a finite a set of unitary matrices that are indexed by the group elements G. <clears throat> okay, and. Um, and you know, and let's assume that the group G and the set are chosen in such a way that this map here, so G goes to the unitary matrix UG, is almost compatible with multiplication in the group. So what this means, or what I mean is that the multi, um, it's compatible in, with multiplication in G up to phase vectors. So this means that uh, U corresponding, so the unitary matrix corresponding to uh, G times H is equal to the product, but pro but possibly you know we have some uh, some phase vector. Um, so some, something like this is called a projective unitary representation of this group, but that's not so important. Okay, and let's further uh, assume that these two guys are chosen such that this here is true. So this means if we average over the group in this fashion then we basically get the zero matrix if x, if this operator x uh, has trace zero. Okay, and here you know one more thing to define. So S is a subset of G, a generating set, and this means that every element in G can be written as a product of elements in S. So you know, maybe this looks a little intimidating, but it's really not. So you know, let's look at a simple example. So we have a qubit, we have this group, Z2 times Z2, and we have the unitary matrices identity and the Pauli matrices, and then this mapping uh, defines uh, such a thing, and this can be easily generalized to uh, to QDIT. Okay, and <clears throat> and now, so now, uh, so. So let's look at the elementary control Hamiltonian. So assume that we can physically implement the generators S, this generating set of a group G. And so what, what do I mean by this? So this means that we can obtain this unitary matrix US indexed by this element S as a control uh, as control propagators by switching on some suitably chosen bounded strength time dependent control Hamiltonians over this interval here. So uh, once, you know, once the whole, uh, this, um, once this Hamiltonian has been active for time delta, then we get the desired thing, and this is what the, uh, the control propagator uh, before we finished uh, this, uh, this cycle. Okay. <clears throat> So now I, I want to use all this stuff to simulate Hamiltonians with um, <clears throat> bounded strength controls. So we need some more uh, group and graph theoretic tools. <clears throat> so let gamma be the Cayley graph of G with respect to the generating set S. So uh, what does this mean? So the vertices are group elements and there are and then the directed edges are labeled by generators. And there is an edge from G to H if and only if, uh, so G times the generator S uh, brings us to H. Okay, and you know, let's look at some uh, examples of Cayley graphs. So here again, this example, so Z2 times Z2 and then uh, this group is generated by these uh, two elements. So this is uh, component-wise addition modulo, modulo two. And so, you know, here we have these group elements and then, uh, so by adding zero, one, we get here and so on. And here a slightly more complicated example. So here, what this means is that this has to be closed like this. So it's, uh, it's a torus. Okay, so still more stuff uh, to introduce. So a sequence G1, S1, G2, S2, Gn, Sn of group elements. So these are, well. Okay. Uh, 
so these are group elements and these are generators. So such a thing is called uh, an Euler cycle if the following is satisfied. So we obtain the next group element by multiplying the previous group element by Sj. Okay, and then we want that when we're at the end, so if we multiply this element by this here, we want to come back to this element here. And what we want is that each pair G comma S occurs exactly once in this sequence for all G in G and all S in S. And without loss of generality, we can uh, assume that G1 is equal to the identity element. Okay, and uh, so the G's are going to correspond to the control propagators and here the, uh, uh, sorry, the group elements are going to correspond to the um, control um, propagators and these are, um, uh, and these are the, the control Hamiltonians, the pulses. Okay, but, uh, okay, but uh, here, so you know, some, some simple uh, properties of Euler cycles. So, uh, so the Euler cycle visits every vertex G, uh, G in G exactly. So this is the cardinality of uh, the generating set uh, times. And moreover, each uh, vertex uh, G is left by each of the S-labeled edges exactly once. So it's something very, very balanced. So basically it means that every, every edge in the Cayley graph is used exactly uh, once and therefore, you know, this is the length of this um, Euler cycle. Okay, so a simple example, so again, you know, this uh, Z2 times Z2, so an Euler cycle would be, you know, we go like this and then we go, we go back. Okay, and now we're going to use this uh, Euler, this um, um, an Euler cycle to define an annihilation scheme. And the way it works is like this. Okay, so here we have the Euler cycle, and then we choose the cycle length to be n times uh, delta. And delta is going to be the length of uh, these uh, su uh, sub intervals. Okay, and the control Hamiltonian is obtained by switching on the elementary control Hamiltonians according to the uh, uh, Euler cycle. Um, okay, so you know, let me remind you so that in, uh, we ha uh, so our available control Hamiltonians are indexed by generators, and um, what we assume is that. So here we, uh, here we switch on this uh, Hamiltonian corresponding to S1 and uh, once, once um, it has been switched on for, for time delta, we implement the unitary uh, U S1. Okay, and everything is, and then you know we have uh, this, um, this relation that uh, group elements correspond to unitary matrices. Okay, so basically what we have to do is, you know, we let the system evolve under this Hamiltonian uh, HS1, then under HS2, and so on, and this comes from the, this comes from the uh, Euler cycle. <clears throat> okay, and so, you know, let us analyze uh, this uh, Euler annihilation scheme. And so it's going to be very uh, useful to, uh, to analyze the resulting dynamics, it will be very useful to define this map. So this is averaging over the group, so this um, pi of G, and also these maps here, F of S, for the different uh, generators, okay, and Y. So it's not too difficult, but, you know, it's a little bit, you know, a lot of notation, you have to look at it carefully, but maybe, you know, just the intuition is that each pair G comma S occurs exactly once in the Euler cycle. So when we look at the resulting uh, time uh, evolution, we're going to be able to somehow group it according to group elements and also to these uh, generators. Okay, and now what one can show is that the effective Hamiltonian can be expressed as follows. It can be written as this concatenation of these two quantum operations. So the, um, 
So the, uh, this here corresponds to the generators and here to the averaging over group. And if uh, G is chosen such that you know, it annihilates everything, then you know, we just get zero. So we can, uh, so we can achieve uh, annihilation with bounded strength uh, Hem control Hamiltonians. Okay, and uh, so this this scheme here has been uh, proposed by uh, uh, many Neil and Lorenza Viola, and but you know this thing only worked for for decoupling, and so the new result is: can we somehow uh, extend it so that we can simulate more general Hamiltonians, not just the zero uh, Hamiltonian? And the idea is uh, as follows: so assume that the desired Hamiltonian can be written uh, like this here. So here we, so again, you know, here we have unitary matrices that correspond, or, or you know, unitary matrices that are indexed by group elements. And so here we conjugate the Hamiltonian, and here we have uh, some, um, uh, you know, some tau of Gs. And you know, let's assume that we can express it in the following form. Then the cycle time is gonna be n times delta, where n is the length of an Euler cycle, and here this is the sum of these guys here. <clears throat> okay, and, and so how does how, how does this thing work? So we're gonna implement the Euler cycle, but we're gonna do a little bit more. And um, so you know, let's look at this uh, this um, picture here. So, um, um, so you know, so up till now, you know, this is the, the the control propagator that has been implemented. Okay, and now in now we switch on this Hamiltonian H S J minus one, and we do it for the time delta. And once this interval here is uh, done then this is the control propagator that has been uh, um, achieved. And now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just wait for the time tau gj, so these guys come from this here, and this is the cardinality of uh, the generating set. So basically what we do is we introduce these uh, idle idle times. Okay, and you know, if we go back, you know, to the bang-bang control, you know, the length of these intervals is basically a zero. Okay, so I hope, uh, I hope that, you know, you understand the, the idea. So, um, the analysis, you know, is a little bit uh, complicated, but, you know, just to give you uh, an, an idea, so it can be shown that the effective Hamiltonian can be expressed uh, as follows. So what we're gonna get is, so this comes from the fact that uh, we have an underlying uh, annihilation scheme based on, um, um, on this Euler cycle, but we have also introduced these idle times and this is gonna lead to, to this here. And so this is gonna be um, proportional to our desired um, uh, Hamiltonian. And so here we get, you know, this, this uh, factor in front of the desired Hamiltonian H tilde, and this term N delta does not occur when, contr uh, when bang, bang controls are available. So this means that with, bang, uh, with uh, bounded strength uh, controls, we can still simulate Hamiltonians, but we have to, play, uh, to pay uh, a certain price. And the price is, you know, I mean, how fast uh, are these um, bounded strength pulses and the length of the uh, Euler cycle. Um, okay, so now, um, so, so you know, so far I have not uh, resolved uh, the structure of the system in in any in any way. So this was very very general. But now let's look at the case that you know, assume that the quantum system consists of n coupled qubits, and you know, so now we're going to be uh, looking at bang bang controls again. So assume that the set of bang bang control operations is so the 
um, the Pauli matrices or uh, n-fold tensor products of Pauli matrices. So what this means is, or what we assume is that the qubits can be addressed individually and that we can, at any time, we can apply any uh, of these Pauli matrices uh, on, the, on the qubits. And then the set of the uh, control propagators is also the n-fold, uh, the set of n-fold uh, uh, tensor products of uh, Pauli operators. Okay, and you know, so how can we how can we uh, achieve uh, annihilation? So you know, apply the control operations on the qubits in such a way that each unitary in this set here is obtained exactly once as a control propagator. And so why does this define an annihilation scheme? So the reason is that if we average over over this set of unitary matrices then, you know, the operator X is made um, uh, to zero, provided that, you know, it uh, has trace uh, zero. <clears throat> okay, but, you know, what, 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 is the, what is the problem? So, you, the problem is that this scheme is highly inefficient since the number of control operations is exponential in the number of qubits. Okay, and so can we can we do better? And y yes, of course, you know we can we can do better if we take into account that the Hamiltonians that occur in in like, you know real physical systems are are too local. So we take advantage of, of the fact that the system Hamiltonian is too local. So it can be written as a sum of pair interactions. So here H K L is an interaction between uh, qubits K and uh, L. Okay, and um, so if we want to take advantage of this uh, structure, we have to look at a, uh, something, you know, from combinatorics that is called an orthogonal array. And uh, what, what, so what is an orthogonal array? So. A is a finite set of cardinality S, and here we have uh, lowercase n and um, uppercase n, and so an array of this dimension here, so this means we have lowercase n many rows, and here this is uh, uh, the number of columns, uh, with entries from this set is called an orthogonal array with uh, S levels, strength T, and index uh, uh, lambda if so what this means is you know if we pick any any t rows of this orthogonal array and then look at the columns of this uh, of this uh, sub array so we want that each possible t tuple of elements in uh, in a i think it should be here to the to the t uh, occurs precisely lambda times as a column so um Maybe this is a you know very formal definition, but let's look at this example here. I hope I'm not going to follow. <laughs> uh, okay, so look, you know, let's let's look. Um, so if we are working with uh, pair interaction, then the strength is going to be uh, equal to two. So you know, let's look at the first, you know, two two rows, and now you can convince yourself that you know here we have the pair one one. 1x, 1y, 1z, and you know you can see that every possible pair occurs uh, exactly once. But this orthogonal array is designed in such a way that you know if you pick this this row and this row, this condition is going to be satisfied, and um, and uh, and so on. And um, uh, Okay, and you know, what we can do is, so we can uh, construct orthogonal arrays from error correcting codes. So, um, you know, I just uh, wanted to give you, you know, this theorem so that you see that these things can be uh, constructed efficiently. OK, 
Okay, and so how can we construct uh, annihilation schemes based on orthogonal arrays? So basically the idea is that apply the bang-bang control operations on the qubit such that the resulting control propagators follow the columns of the orthogonal array. And it turns out that you know this defines an annihilation scheme for arbitrary, even unknown, to local Hamiltonians on n qubits with n uh, control operations. And you know it is much more efficient than this exponential scheme because there are efficient constructions of orthogonal arrays. So this means if we have n qubits, then we will need only. Um, uh, so the number of these composite uh, pulses will uh, scales only linearly with, uh, with n. Okay, and uh, so how much time do I have? Three, three, three minutes, okay. So, you know, the combinatorial, so, um, but you know, what happens if, you know, we have um, only, you know, uh, these bounded strength uh, Hamiltonians that are available. So, you know, let's assume that we can, uh, that they can be used to implement these uh, propagators and then if they are switched on for time delta. And assume that we can uh, realize these control Hamiltonians on the qubits uh, individually. And then, you know, um, so the bang-bang uh, decoupling based on uh, uh, orthogonal array, so this was known before, and this is a new result that somehow we married Euler cycles with orthogonal arrays, uh, and we can still achieve efficient uh, decoupling, and the only price that we have to pay is this uh, logarithmic factor in the number of qubits. Okay, so conclusion, so perfect timing. So. Uh, Okay, so you know, I'm someone, you know, I mean, computer scientists interested in, you know, uh, discrete mathematics. So I presented it from a very uh, abstract point of view. And now it would be, of course, important to adjust these techniques to realistic uh, scenarios. And um, maybe, you know, another uh, idea would be to, important idea to extend this, this here to uh, to the open system setting. So here I have only assumed that we have a closed uh, quantum system, that we don't have a coupling with the environment. Uh, so by the way, you know, the techniques that I presented you, so they also work, we can also uh, use them, the annihilation scheme to, to remove uh, the coupling uh, to the environment. Okay, and so, um, ah, okay, and not, another interesting thing would be, so can we simulate, you know, a desired Hamiltonian, for example, implementing some interesting uh, gate, quantum gate, while at the same time uh, decoupling from the environment? And maybe, you know, another thing, you know, that we, you know, could look at is simulation of open system Hamiltonians. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. basically saying that that uh, that this is uh, not 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 exact so over time that this will no 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 I'm saying that you know this simulated Hamiltonian uh -huh. is in some sense you know less interesting than the initial one and you would like rather to have opposite uh, situation because you have uh, really uh, I mean one can introduce for example kind of entropy for this Hamiltonian yes uh, make all this eigenvalues positive and, and uh, normalize it, so you, you know that the spectrum of this new Hamiltonian simulated would be uh, of larger entropy, so it would be in some sense more flat. Mm -hmm. So in the extreme case it would be completely flat, which gives you uh, uh, the coupling from the, from the system. So I would like to uh, point out this, this kind of property. Yeah, you 
can only achieve for Hamiltonians that can be written as rescaled convex combination of conjugates of, of the Hamiltonians. Uh, but, but you know, uh, if your control operations are sufficiently powerful, you can show that you can simulate any Hamiltonian. Okay, but I, I don't know if... Well, if you restrict the initial set of Hamiltonian, for sure you can simulate on a very definite class, which has flatter uh, spectrum, because of this, uh, of this property, of this map, of the stochastic. So which is the second order? No, we haven't. We, no, no, we ha so we haven't looked uh, at that. So maybe you know, um, it would be interesting, you know, to see if you know you can use some combinatorial techniques to guarantee that the second order term is uh, is zero. But no, we we have completely ignored that. But yes. With Manu Marie, we solved that problem. We solved it. Complete generality with plug K maps. So into any order. You know, you're, you're, you're saying that it's possible to use uh, techniques that are known to bound the error. Yes. Okay, I mean, yes, I mean, I completely agree so that, uh, you know, I'm sure you know that there are very good techniques to do that, but we haven't, but we haven't done that. that for this problem, if it was done, though, you know, if you go back and look at Maddie's papers, it, it's, it's worked out in great detail. Mm -hmm.